teaching is arguably the most important profession in the world. This is because it comes with so much responsibility. In Angola, classes are large, pay is low, meetings are long, resources are few, and teachers are tired. This is not unique to Angola or even Africa. Even teachers in the United States talk about being overworked and underpaid. In addition to this, Angolan teachers must deal with other challenges, such as lack of electricity. Wait. Wait for a minute. Let's wait for the power. Yes, plus, I was saying, can we say the plural of I? Eyes. 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 Despite all these frustrations, teaching has many joys, and the reason many teachers stay in the profession is because of the positive influence they can have on their students. When we talk about developing professionally in this module, we mean expanding your skills as a teacher and improving your own English language ability. So what is a professional teacher? We asked some Angolan educators this question. Well, a professional teacher is a committed one because I guess professionalism has to do with commitment. So is a committed one toward his work as as a teacher and especially to students. I would define a professional teacher as an adaptable person because he can deal with any situation whenever, however, and wherever. That's a professional teacher. It's a complicated question, but personally I think that a professional teacher is someone that's committed with his own uh, teaching development. It's not necessary to be trained to be a professional teacher. We can uh, fulfill with the rules of professional teaching, te teach I mean, uh, not knowing that we are being professional. I define a professional teacher as someone who knows how to, to transmit his knowledge. Uh, I think professional teachers are competent because they teach very well. For, for myself, a, person, a professional teacher is the one who can who can help the student, who can help and learn with the student. For me, a professional teacher is somebody who is really responsible and accountable for the learning of his students. I mean, somebody who does more beyond what the school offers. Uh, sometimes we have to kind of sacrifice, sacrifice time, money in order to become a good professional teacher and coping with the um, reality here has not been easy so one has to kind of uh, really make a lot of sacrifices to become a good teacher. It's not easy here. Angola is unique because not all teachers that are working now have been trained formally. This makes for a difficult situation but even untrained teachers can be professionals if they show commitment to being a teacher and actively seek to improve their skills. It is important to remember that teachers work for students. It's a teacher's job to make sure the students understand and can produce language, but it's not only students who learn. For a teacher, learning is a lifelong process, learning about their students, the language, and themselves. Now, what affects your ability to develop your skills as a teacher and learner of English? I think it's the environment itself. Yeah, because the environment doesn't help us to develop our teaching skills. When I say the environment, I'm referring to, you see, we, sometimes we only speak English when we are teaching there in a school, or even, though, or even when we just meet someone who speaks English, because uh, 
Sometimes we can pass two or three days without speaking English if we don't meet someone who speaks. First of all, I have to find myself in good mood because if I'm not in good mood, then I, uh, I cannot develop <laughs> my teaching skills. I think that's what affects my developing skills. The time is not enough and the, the, the problem for or every English teacher, for all of us, the money. A good remuneration makes a good teacher. Money, teacher, teacher I think the, the teacher work hard, happy, and don't do, we, we, we didn't give any importance for other things. So what happens when you give teachers no money? Teachers no money? How can I say nothing? With no money, well, <laughs> with no money, no money, no nobody work. Life keeps moving despite the challenges Angolan teachers face, and it's up to you to decide how to deal with those challenges. So, who is responsible for your development as a teacher and learner of English? I am responsible for my uh, development as a teacher. The U.S. Embassy. Who is responsible for my development as a teacher it is myself. The Minister of Education. Uh, actually, it's me. My methodology teachers. Me, as a teacher. My English coordinator. Just me, just I can be responsible for my development. Just I, because I need, I must to go uh, behind them for, to find it for myself. <laughs> just myself. We cannot wait for for the government or the director of education, because he have sometimes he, he, they have no time. But look for this, so we can try to do something for to help them too. So what do you do personally to develop your skills in English and in teaching? I live with my, my cousin, he's also an English teacher. So we speak every day together. I listen to news, music, radio, watch TV, daily. I do it daily. Occasionally, I, I attend workshops sponsored by the government. I learn a lot of things, how to make a lesson plan, how to teach vocabularies, grammar, etc. Well, uh, I develop my, uh, my teaching um, skills, um, reading and sometimes um, uh, surfing the internet. I go for research sometimes and I read books, uh, books relating to um, uh, English teaching uh, practice and uh, sometimes we, we go for workshops. Uh, to me, a lot more should, should be done because this workshop is kind of, yes, it doesn't ha happen often and, and, and most of the time uh, those responsible, they are not specialized in the English teaching area. So this is one of, I think, the difficulties we are facing. Yes, it's your responsibility to develop as a teacher and learner of English. The government, the school administration, and other organizations may organize events, but ultimately, you have to attend and then work with what you've learned to shape the way you teach. In our final section, we will explore some ways you can improve your language and teaching skills. We hope what you see will inspire you to do all you can to develop. Which ones will you use? The English language teaching in Angola started uh, in Lubango. The English project started in Lubango, and we have the course almost for for almost thirty years. And we have never had a conference here, uh, and we wanted to, to change it. We we decided to have this conference because in two thousand and eleven, I mean last year, the American embassy 
um, gave me the chance of going to the States where I attended and presented a TESOL conference in New Orleans. So I got that experience how they organized that, although uh, I didn't really talk to the organizers, but I saw how things were. And based on that experience from the American Embassy, I decided to implement those changes here. So I came to Lubango and uh, I decided to organize this conference this year. So the main objectives of this, this conference is first to update learners and uh, teachers of English yes, on the new approach to teaching English. The second is to give a chance to those who have never presented at this conference because most of the students and most of the local teachers, they will rarely have the chance of going to a TESOL conference and this may be the, 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 the place where they will have this chance. My name is Carlos Samuel Chico. I am an English language teacher at the said Wim. Uh, the title of my presentation is The Importance of West Law to Improve Reading Power as a University Student. How do you think this presentation has helped you as a teacher or as a student? Uh, basically, it was an incentive to me. The more I was explaining to others, the more I was understanding and getting it better. Thanks to the organizer for it, because it's an opportunity for me as a student to show the world what can I do, what I can do, you know. By presenting, it's my first time to come, you know, to face the audience and presenting a topic that is, this is science. Some, sometimes I had many difficult during, the, during answering the question, but uh, this is very important because it's a lesson for me and from now on it will also be remem remembered in my mind. And I thank very much the organizer because I showed who I am to the world. He said Wheela appreciated the events of the conference as well, and the directors spoke about their importance to the institution. Mr. Senhoras e Mr. Senhoras, as transformações que ora assistimos no Ixed Wheela são sinais claros do resgate dos princípios da moralidade que se quer numa universidade como a nossa. A entrega dos jovens deste tipo de atividade, como sendo a Semana do Inglês, onde observamos e observaremos com júbilo a entrega, em particular, em atividades do género, afastando aquele sentimento de letargia que se vinha vivendo na nossa instituição. Bem, haja, pois sinto os sintomas da cultura da mudança na nossa, na nossa instituição. Events like a conference bring together diverse people for a common cause. Attending is just one way to participate. Helping to organize is another way. Yes. It's important to work because we gain more experience in, in doing things. And it's also good to help because it's our course we are doing here in English. And it's, it's always good. And uh, I'm helping others in, in fixing computers with the data shows and helping colleagues where they are finding some mistakes or difficulties. Of course, uh, I know that although every, everyone is busy, but we have our, our tasks in such a way that although he's busy, but he knows that he cannot do everything completely by his own. So he needs some help, he needs also some contributions, and we are there to, to work together. Another way to make the most of a conference is to record presentations with a camera, a phone, or a computer. You can review them later at home and study more. Of course, get permission from the presenter first. The point of this presentation is for myself, as being a teacher, myself, like him. I think I also need this experience for my own professional activities. Yeah.
Conferences are an excellent way to practice English and learn about new teaching strategies, but they don't happen very often. They can be expensive and take a lot of work to achieve. Another way you can share ideas about teaching is by organizing a small gathering to share your experience with your colleagues. The concept is easy. Firstly, you can keep a journal or diary during the week, recording your teaching experiences, and then share what you've written with others. Using a journal also gives you another way to practice your English, but this time while writing. Then, you make a regular meeting time to informally sit and talk about real issues you are having Hi. in class. So when are we meeting tomorrow to talk about our classes? Um, we are meeting at 3.30 tomorrow. That's good. Okay. okay. See you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Colleagues, I have a problem with my students. They are always late. I don't know what to do with them. I think the best way is to set up rules and they must participate in the rules. Whenever they come late, you remind them that you set up rules so you punch them according to the rules that we set. Okay. Okay. I don't think that um, um, at the end of uh, every week, yeah. you, uh, let's say the first, the, the first five, mm -hmm. five people in the class, they get a reward. Maybe a book, a storybook, or some sweets, or something that you just try to find out what they like. And every end of the week, like every, fri every Friday, you give them that. And I think that that will motivate them to come early in the class. Yes. 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 So, uh, I also think that uh, for those uh, for those dance school characters, mm -hmm. maybe you can give them uh, an extra mark. Extra mark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, an extra mark is good. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. What okay. do you think? Mm -hmm. But I think we should keep them outside. Keeping them outside. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about your troubles and you can share what's going well. The topics depend on what you're experiencing at the time in your own classroom. You can talk through your problems and find solutions together. This builds a supportive community that looks out for each other, works together, and shares the same goal of teaching competently. Another reason why we organize that is to promote friendship among teachers of English, among uh, learners of English, to create that English family here, to know who we are, where we are, so we want to, to, to have that. Uh, my name is Francisco dos Anjos. I'm just, uh, I'm just happy to, to, uh, to invite me in this event. I'm so thanks for that. I never had this event before. I'm so thanks. I, I meet new people here. I want more English, you know. So English without without English, no life for me because so I love so much. But something I force day by day to learn English. So this thing is very important for me. We are learning English in, here in Angola, but we can't speak to no. We can't speak anyway. Just learn. Just stay with the head. Just some some of the days you you read uh, you you read. You can't speak to nobody. You don't speak to anybody, you know. So when when we find this moment is so something great. Events like English Weekend or even an English Day can make the language come alive and give people the rare opportunity to practice it. Participants can play games, sing, and otherwise have fun together using the language in an enjoyable way with no pressure. What game are you playing? <laughs> I'm out. I've never. I've never. I've never. Have you ever played it before? No, 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 it's so nice. It's fantastic. It's fun? Yeah, very fun. Good, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Participants can also be creative using music, dance, poetry, and theater in English. This also gives them a chance to use English in ways not traditionally practiced in classrooms in Angola. You can learn by performing and while enjoying.
For teachers, it is a challenge to find other people who speak English in Angola. Since Portuguese is the national language, sometimes even Angolan teachers of English are not used to speaking English with each other. This is the reality of living and teaching in Angola, but it's not impossible to resolve. Have you finished with your class? No, 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 Kabe. Okay. Tenho que visitar a família. Por isso que ela não terminou com os trabalhos. Estão doentes? Já estão. É, primeira saúde. Já, primeira saúde. Eu já acabei. Okay. Tá, tá bom. Tá bom. Bom trabalho. Tchau. Amanhã. Although people feel more comfortable when they use their mother tongue, they can still talk to their colleagues in English sometimes. This will promote the language and may encourage students to learn and speak it. Communicating regularly in the language may keep your own language level high or even raise it. In Angola, a common belief is that contact with native speakers is the best way to learn English perfectly. It hasn't been proven, and there is a low probability of finding native speakers to talk with you. Instead, do something that doesn't cost much money. Spend time with English speakers and dedicate the time to actually speak English. Do something together to have a shared experience and make memories. Take a walk together around town. Invite someone over for tea. Take a trip together. Watch a film on TV and talk about it. Read an academic article or something fun from a magazine and discuss what you learned. Or use English as the language of communication in your department meetings. Maybe you won't have the contact you dream of with a native speaker, but at the very least, you will keep up your oral practice and maintain a connection with English that didn't exist before. We have just given you some ideas for continued professional development in this module. There are many more. Read over the English Language Forum article in your teacher guide for descriptions of these activities or brainstorm more with your colleagues. The famous African-American tennis player, Arthur Ashe, said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Use this as motivation to start small. Remember, the most important thing is to develop your skills. Sometimes you don't need money or materials to do it. Have fun exploring the possibilities. Thank you.